Even if it sometimes may not look like it, your average NBA player is really good at basketball. Even the 12th player on the worst team in the league was once a standout player in college or overseas, and only about 1% of high school players ever make it to a Division I team. Looking at these bad NBA players going against their peers might make you think you could take them one-on-one, but it takes actually seeing these guys play against average Joes to see how good they really are. Let's see how that goes. Joel Embiid When you're seven foot tall, you don't have to be very good at basketball to make regular people look like infants on the court. Joel Embiid has mixed it up with fans and part players on plenty of occasions, and he usually doesn't even have to try when he does. When he's guarded by dudes who barely clear six feet, that usually leads to situations like them. But when he's feeling particularly tryhardy, you'll find him bouncing the ball off of people's heads and throwing down windmill dunks on them. It's probably a lot of fun for average Joes to play with an actual NBA player, but playing against Embiid might just scar you for life. Brian Scalabrini Before guys like Alex Caruso and Taco Fall ascended to meme status and became fan favorites, there was the original meme player, the white mamba, Brian Scalabrini. The former power forward never averaged more than 6.3 points per game in his career, but if pictures on the internet are to be believed, and they are, he has dunked on the likes of LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant all at once. Still, he never would have made the NBA if he didn't know how to play, and some people had to learn that the hard way. Some high school kid was so confident that he could take the white mamba that he was willing to bet a pair of shoes on it. Scalabrini was more than up to the challenge, and he decided to teach the cocky youngster a lesson. The final score was 11-0, and Scalabrini kept his shoes. This wasn't the first time someone trash-talked the mamba and challenged him to a one-on-one, -on -one, but no non-NBA player had actually won one of those one-on-ones to this day. The white mamba has a clear message to any average Joe who thinks they can take him down. I am closer to LeBron than any of you are to me. Kyrie Irving I can understand thinking you can take guys like Brian Scalabrini, but thinking you can take on one of the premier point guards in the NBA is misguided at best. You see him blowing by NBA defenders and scoring ridiculous layups like it's nothing when you watch him on TV. But apparently there are some people out there who think they have what it takes to go against Kyrie on the basketball court. Spoiler alert, they don't. Kyrie just does Kyrie things. He blows by people with these and make his defenders dance like it's Saturday night at the club. Sheesh, you know you good when you're not even trying particularly hard and you scar someone for life on the court. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, the king of the fourth quarter has a sad story that rivals those of Derrick Rose or Grant Hill. His spirited performances and undersized frame made him a fan favorite and his decision to play in a playoff game just a day after the death of his sister cemented everyone's respect for him. It's unfortunate that a hip injury sapped him of the trademark quickness that allowed him to put up 30 points a game, and he fell out of the league quickly after that. His most recent NBA comeback was sparked by an 81-point performance in a Pro-Am game. Isaiah wasn't even ball hogging, and he still put up a crazy scoring total. This would have been kind of impressive against anyone but guys that play pro-am are a tier or two above your average park baller. Still, this really makes you think about how good NBA guys are when someone who is no longer considered to be a rotation player can still absolutely dominate in the upper tier of amateur competition. Giannis If Kyrie makes NBA players look like statues on a regular basis, Giannis makes quite a few of them look like kids. If his athleticism dwarfs some of the most athletic people on the planet, average Joes might as well be practice cones. Early in his career, Giannis and his brother Thonis played a pickup game with some locals on a Greek court. As you can imagine, their appearance drew quite a crowd, and that crowd got to witness a show. Giannis and Thonis didn't have to try hard at all yet they were still dunking at will and treating the crowd to some nasty blocks. The guys they were playing against probably knew they wouldn't stand a chance, but at least they got to feel what the NBA players feel when they're facing Giannis for a day. Peyton Pritchard From a Celtics legend to a Celtics sophomore, there seems to be a theme of guys who played in Boston going off at Pro-Am events. After a surprisingly decent rookie campaign, Pritchard was looking like the Summer League MVP prior to his second season. He left the Summer League before it concluded because of what the team called prior obligations. Peyton's obligations were to school a bunch of pro-am dudes in the game, and school them he did, dropping a casual 92 points in the process and hitting shots from anywhere and everywhere, from layups to threes from the logo. 
there was just no stopping him. And the dude is barely no longer a rookie. Former NBA player Mike James dropped 70 at the same event, just to prove how much better NBA players are compared to the rest of the dudes playing Pro-Am. Dwayne Wade. He was wrapping up a workout at a local gym where some very average guys were playing five on five. After Dwayne was done, he figured he might as well get some reps in with him. Given that these dudes were all at least six inches shorter than Wade and a couple of light years behind in the athleticism department, this was an easy cardio session for Dwayne. Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie was playing against someone with some actual basketball experience under their belt. YouTuber Austin Mills played Division I basketball and he has played against many current NBA players, both in pickups and in one-on-ones. One of his videos has him going up against Spencer Dinwiddie, who currently plays for Washington. Dinwiddie is taller than him, so the rule they had for this game was no posting up. It didn't matter, since Spencer seemed to score at will while Austin was struggling to even get the ball. John Wall Playing with a group of high school students, one of them got particularly cocky and challenged Wall to a one-on-one. -on -one. Wall asked the kid, don't you know who I am? And the kid answered, yeah, the only point guard in the league that can't shoot. Mind you, this is John Wall way before his injury, so we're talking about one of the best athletes in the whole league. Anyway, Wall took the kid's challenge, and the kid hit his first couple of shots. This did two things. It got his teammates fired up, and it got Wall fired up. The rest of the game went about as you would expect, and Wall finished the game by dunking on the kid. Kobe Bryant. Back during the 2011 NBA lockout, many NBA players resorted to playing in various pickup games either for fun or as a way to stay in shape. It was during this lockout that Kobe Bryant made his Drew League debut and turned it into a story for the ages. This game featured a couple of other NBA players, most notably James Harden. Kobe's team was down big at the start of the fourth quarter, and the police escort that came with Kobe asked him to leave, but he rejected him because, in his words, he had to finish the game. And finish the game he did. Not only did his team make up the deficit, but the game came down to the final possession. You already know what happens here. Kobe takes the ball on the final possession because of course he does, and he hits a long two right in Harden's face for the win. He finished that game with 45 points. Kevin Durant. Kobe wasn't the only superstar that played in non-NBA games during the 2011 lockout. KD's idea was to play on some of the legendary street ball courts in New York, and he decided to start with the most legendary one of them all, Rucker Park. KD played for DC Power in the Entertainers Basketball Classic, and he came to put on a show. He didn't care much for the competition, and he was doing anything he wanted on the court, from hitting deep threes to throwing down effortless dunks. KD finished the game with 66 points and treated the crowd with one of the most legendary performances that court had ever seen, and given its history, it has seen more than a few. That's it for this time. Let us know if there's any other times NBA players showed out against regular people that we missed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.